$500 for a driver that still slices. $1,000 for a new set of irons that still don't get the ball off the ground. I'm here to tell you, if you have one of these, for a measly $25, you can change your golf swing for the better and actually use those golf clubs how they're intended to. We've got ourselves an impact bag. And now, if you've ever taken a golf lesson, you've probably seen this thing. The instructor throws it down, you work on the same drill, you whack the bag a whole bunch, hopefully it works. I'm here to show you a variety of different drills and a drill that's gonna work with your driver that's gonna take your game to the next level. So you can just take your $25 impact bag, shove all your towels in it, make it nice and cushy, and you can start getting better at golf as soon as possible. So you've seen the traditional impact drills where you just take the bag, you place it on the ground, and you spend the next 15 minutes just whacking the bag as hard as you can, waking up the neighbors, I'm here to show you there's a different way to work on all the swing faults that you might potentially have. And the first one is gonna be for the guy that is the chronic slicer of the golf ball. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take this bag, you're gonna set it up, and you're gonna stand it up so it's gonna feel like a miniature wall. So you wanna make sure that thing feels really intimidating. And then, the next thing you're gonna do, is you're gonna take your golf ball, you're gonna slide it really, really close to the bag. In fact, you're gonna probably put it about one ball away from the bag and you're gonna make sure you slide it far enough forward. So the reason for that is most players that swing over the top are already extremely over the top as they come into the golf ball. So they're gonna start whacking the bag with the toe of the club and probably gonna hit the bag, the club's gonna move. You're not even gonna be able to hit the golf ball. So what I'm gonna tell you is, without a golf ball first, set up really close to the bag and then start to make some practice swing. And see if you can start to move your body in a way that gets the club to move in to out more. So instead of out to in, let's make sure when we swing, it feels like the club is going to move from the inside of the golf ball and almost go to the outside. If you are a slicer of the golf ball, this is probably the easiest way to correct that slice. This could take your scoring average down five, six, 10 shots really, really quickly. Is it gonna be an overnight fix? No, because you need to take this drill and put it out on the golf course at some place, but what I would say is, if you can work on this, you are gonna be a substantially better golfer, and you're gonna hit far fewer slices when you're out there on the course. So, that's great. What if I'm not a slicer, though? So what can I do if I'm not a slicer? So, you know, another thing we can do is, what if we hook the ball? What if we're a chronic early extender, we come out of our shot, we raise the handle, we slap that thing hard left? Where am I gonna put this bag to make it you know, maybe a little bit more you know, conducive to a, a player that's gonna hook the ball. So I'm gonna take the same bag, I'm gonna stand it up and I'm gonna put it a little bit behind me, a little bit right here. So it's kind of like right where my feet are. So you can't see my feet in the video, right? So the bag is covering my feet and I'm gonna put the ball back in its normal position. And usually chronic hookers of the golf ball have a face that's shut and a path that's moving too far in to out. If I go to hit this golf ball and I try to extend and maneuver the club more into out, I'm gonna hit the bag. I obviously don't wanna hit the bag, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start to make some exaggerated downswings where I feel like I'm going more across or over the top of the golf ball. So I'm gonna hit a couple shots and I'm gonna make sure I am well outside the bag. Another great way to do that is you could actually do the opposite of the first drill. You could put it over here and you're gonna take that ball and you're gonna put it almost behind the bag at the same distance. You're gonna feel like instead of extending into the bag, you're gonna come down and across and your exit's gonna be lower. So it's gonna look a little bit more like this. So right there, you've got your $25 impact bag. You've already got three different drills to work on club path. How simple is this? This is like the best training aid you could possibly buy, biggest bang for your buck. So training impact is always great, right? But there's other things in our golf swing that just aren't involved in impact. We maybe need to learn how to hit the ball hard and far and hit it far enough to play enjoyable golf. Well, we can use this almost as like a medicine ball. So if you took this bag, it's full of towels. I think if we were to take this bag and make pretend backswings, like this, that would be great. But the more important part is if I were to try to throw the bag as far as I could, I wanna make sure when I throw this bag, I can work on extending. 
the heck's extending? Well, extending is when you push off the ground, your hips move underneath you, and your chest tilts back a little bit. So now you've got full thoracic extension. So if I were to throw this as high and far as I could, I probably wouldn't do this, right? I'm bent over. I'm not gonna throw it very high if I'm still bent over. We go acquire that. But if I were to hold back onto this back and I were to toss it as high and as far as I could, it would probably look a little something like this. I could toss it as high and far as possible because I've used the ground, I've pushed off the ground, and I've projected the bag up and forward. There's no better way to work on that inside in the wintertime if you're grinding on your mechanics than doing that drill. So not only can you work your path, you can now work on how do you leverage the ground to make the ball go further. What I see a lot of times from golfers is they tend to spin out. Maybe that causes some path issues, but more importantly, watch my lower body. Look at that right knee. Look how far out that right knee comes. A lot of times golfers will push that right knee, right leg out towards the golf ball. They'll have to maneuver the golf club around their knee, hit the golf ball. Maybe they hit hosel rackets. Here's a great drill with just this impact bag that you can do to work on that motion and correcting it. So if I were to take this impact bag, place it straight up in the air and straddle it just like this. I'm gonna put it closer to my left leg. So what you notice, there's a little gap here between the bag and my right leg. I wanna make some swings. We're at the top of my backswing. My first move down is getting my right knee to move laterally and kind of squish the bag as much as I can. It's gonna shift my hips forward. It's gonna allow my right foot to bank in and not rotate out. This is a huge, huge problem for a lot of golfers. They move it too far out, which shifts the path, which makes it really hard to find the sweet spot. So your job is, can you shift and move that right knee into the bag? Most likely you're gonna push that bag over so your hips can move laterally. The sweet spot can find the golf ball more frequently and by the time you're done working on these drills all winter, you'll be a world-class ball striker. All right, now do me a solid. Before we get to that bonus drill with the driver, look down below, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell so you set up notifications to always get my content whenever I post something new. Also, in the description of this video, there is a link in there to download my new golfer bootcamp course off of Skillist. It is awesome. It's 45 videos, great content. It's going to make you an absolute winner on the golf course. Take a look at it. It's going to be great for your golf game. And now, bonus driver drill. One of the things I constantly see amongst golfers is when they go to hit the driver, their arms get really short post impact. They pull in and they finish with their arms very tiny, kind of like Tyrannosaurus Rex arms. I need you to extend your arms as far as possible. And the way I'm gonna make you do that is I'm gonna put a T on the ground. Inside we have those fancy little T's right there. And I want you to make some swings. And look how far away that bag is. That thing's probably about three feet away from where the T would be. I want you to make some swings, set up as you normally would, make your back swing, and then stretch out for it. And just barely hit the top of the bag and see if you can make the bag topple over. So that's gonna help you extend through the golf ball. It's gonna help you make sure that your arms and hands aren't getting short and turned over. It's gonna make sure that you're extending the most that you can to try and touch that bag. It's also gonna force the club to stop rotating as rapidly through impact. So the shorter my arms get, the easier it is for me to turn the club face down and around and shift the path. But when they get long, the club is going to stay really square to the golf ball and to the path as long as possible. And I want you to nick the top of the bag. And if you can stretch out even further, you can knock that bag over. So do me a favor in the comments below, leave a message and tell me, number one, do you have an impact bag? Number two, have you ever done any of these drills? And number three, after you practice these drills, did they help? Which one is the most helpful? I'd love to hear from you. I always love hearing when my students and my subscribers get better at golf. That's what I'm here for.